still ahead. Clues in the kitchen tie this home to a shipwreck. An old whale's tooth, a rusty knife, and a letter in a foreign language were all hidden in a quaint seaside colonial. But the real mystery was in a bunch of flowers that surrounded it. Find out who put them there and why. Gary Polachko was one of the few people in his Cape Cod neighborhood who has lace hydrangeas growing in his yard. And he never imagined what they might tell him about his house. When he first moved in, Gary fell in love with the colonial style home's unusual kitchen ceiling. It's rumored to be made of wood from old shipwrecks, and that sparked his curiosity. After I purchased the house, I went to the library and found out who the owners were. Gary learned that in the 1870s, the owner was a man named Jackson Rogers, but that was all he found. So he got quite a shock while renovating the upstairs. That's when he uncovered a secret stash. Hidden in a ceiling were two knives, a medicine bottle, a marble, and a whale's tooth. Maybe one of his kids had saved it, or maybe it was a good luck charm in those days. Later, while working on another part of the ceiling, Gary got even more surprises. All of a sudden, I heard a couple of contractors upstairs scream, come here, come here, come here, Gary, you gotta come upstairs, come here. When I got here, um, one of the contractors was holding in his hands um, all these documents. The papers contained a familiar name. Each one of them, it was the same name. It was uh, Jackson Rogers. The papers formed a record of the kinds of things Rogers had purchased long ago. This one here, which is uh, dated 1860, and it is actually his shopping list. This is a receipt for a flower, and it's uh, dated 1873. Then there was this one for pounds of oyster crackers, which I thought was kind of funny, and that's dated 1872. Gary did a little more research and learned that Rogers was the captain of a ship, so that could explain that whale's tooth and the large quantities of food he was buying. But there were other documents too, like a receipt for a lady's gold watch, a letter from Rogers' brother, and a ticket for a sea passage. By finding these documents, I would have to say that it gave me a little background into the owner at that time period because all I had was a name. One document had Gary stumped. It was a letter written in Portuguese. Gary did a genealogical search and learned that Rogers and his wife came to America from an area near Portugal. That may explain the unusual lace hydrangeas out front. They grow abundantly in Portugal. It's something that he probably planted back then when he um, had this house and it's still here today. But what did that letter say? Gary hired a local translator to help him find out. Turns out it was a note from a relative who wanted to come to America. Gary may never know if that person ever made it, but he's happy to be preserving the memory of Jackson Rogers and his mysterious garden.